This is the EOLARS receiver, and if it's working correctly, you're going to see the light is blinking. And after 30 seconds, it should enter Wi-Fi mode like this one. So you can see that it's blinking like very, very fast. This is an indication of it's, it's in Wi-Fi mode, but occasionally you are going to run into something called an EOLARS lock which the LED light of the receiver is going to remain solid with no flashing at all. This is an indication that the receiver is stuck in bootloader mode and when the receiver is in bootloader mode, you won't be able to bind it to a radio and you won't be able to go to Wi-Fi mode to reflash it for it to recover. However, there is an easy solution for us to fix it as long as you have the beta FPV recovery dongle. You will be able to connect your brick receiver onto the dongle and flash it via USB UR pass through with EOLARS configurator. Let me walk you through these steps. Before I begin, I want you to know some older AIO U boards that has an F4 chip may cause the receiver to go into bootloader mode due to the RX channel is not feeding enough current to the receiver. This is not one of it, but I'm just using it as an example. So no matter how many times you recover your receiver, as long as you connect your receiver to the board, it will go into bootloader mode directly and I don't think there is a fix. So do not get frustrated, just move on to a different board. In addition, I want you to remember the purpose of connecting a receiver to the dongle is mainly to reload the EOLARS firmware for it to reset. And to let the receiver to receive and install data on it, you will need the receiver to be in bootloader mode when connected. Most of the receiver generally comes with a button like this one on it for you to press and hold for it to enter bootloader mode. But for certain ones like the Happy Model EP1 or EP2 receivers or something that looks like this one, you are required to bridge certain paths together. So it actually goes into bootloader mode when power on using the dongle. So you can see it's right here. By the way, if you accidentally breach these two paths on your EP1, EP2 without knowing, congrats as you might have just solved the problem. Remove the bridge and try to see if the receiver works now. All right, done talking, let's enter the steps. First step, as you probably already know, you're gonna solder the little twig thing that came with your dongle onto your re receiver pads. It should be perfectly lined up. Just make sure you don't have any bridges between each of them. Next, you are going to plug in the cable of the dongle. Make sure you plug it in like this. So ground with the black one, five volts with the red and the blue with the RX and the yellow with the TX. Okay, so make sure you don't plug in the wrong one or you are going to fry your receiver. Let's just start plugging it in. So you can see that this one is R minus, so which is ground. So you're going to plug it in carefully. Okay. Next one, you're going to plug in your 5 volts. And the next one is, this one is RX right here, and you are going to have to plug in on the TX right here, same as when you're connecting to your flight controller. So T, R to T. And the next one is our RX on our receiver, and you're going to plug in the TX from your dongle. Okay, so done. Okay, so once everything is plugged in, we are going to, you are going to press and hold the button for it to enter bootloader mode and at the same time plug in the power cable. You can see that it has now be entered into bootloader mode and next we'll be switching to the EOLARS configurator. Next we'll be switching to our EOLARS configurator and you are going to pick the release. We're just going to pick the newest one and this I believe this particular one is going to be DIY 2.4 GHz and 24000 RX ESP. This is the one we're going to pick and we are going to flash it via UART and we are also going to update our binding phrase to 654321 that's my binding phrase and we are going to select the COM ports so you're going to select the one that is called Silicon Lab okay once you're done you're just going to say build and flash okay once the flash is successful your receiver generally should be fixed already. You can see that it's repowered on and it's flashing like that. If you are using EP2 or EP1, you have to remove the solder for it to work. But for this one, it's already working. It should be entering Wi-Fi modes like after 30 seconds. 
Okay, it's now in Wi-Fi mode. Let's go test it out to see if it actually works. Let's connect to EORS, open browser. You can see that we have completed the flashing and it's now in EOLARS 3.3 and we have recovered our EOLARS receiver. So basically, I hope you'll never have to run into this problem. But if you have an EOLARS break, then now you know how to fix it. If you have additional questions, just let me know in the comment section. And certainly, please let me know if this worked for you. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.